Good day, fellow disciple of Jesus. Welcome to prayer on Monday, the 2nd of October. Let's take a deep breath together as we enter into prayer, and we'll begin with our opening chant. Lord, open our lips together, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. O God, make speed to save us together. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. The Lord is our refuge and strength. O come, let us worship. Come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us shout for joy to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before God's presence with thanksgiving and raise a loud shout to him with psalms. For the Lord is a great God and a great King above all gods. In his hand are the caverns of the earth and the heights of the hills are his also. The sea is God's, for he made it, and his hands have molded the dry land. Come, let us bow down and bend a knee, and kneel before the Lord our Maker, for he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. Oh, that today you would hearken to his voice. Glory to the Father and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. We jump ahead in the lectionary to chapter 17, verses 1 to 18 and verse 24 to 41. This concerns the reign of Hosea over Israel, followed by the captivity of Israel by the Assyrians. In the twelfth year of King Ahaz of Judah, Hosea, son of Elah, began to reign in Samaria over Israel. He reigned nine years. He did what was evil in the sight of the Lord, yet not like the kings of Israel who were before him. King Shalmaneser of Assyria came up against him, Hosea became his vassal and paid him tribute. But the king of Assyria found treachery in Hosea, for he had sent messengers to the king of Egypt and offered no tribute to the king of Assyria as he had done year by year. Therefore the king of Assyria confined him and imprisoned him. Then the king of Assyria invaded all the land and came to Samaria. For three years he besieged it. In the ninth year of Hosea, the king of Assyria captured Samaria. He carried the Israelites away to Assyria. He placed them in Halah on the Habor, the river of Gozan, in the cities of the Medes. This occurred because the people of Israel had sinned against the Lord their God, who had brought them up out of the land of Egypt from under the hand of Pharaoh, king of Egypt. They had worshipped other gods and walked in the customs of the nations whom the Lord drove out before the people of Israel and in the customs that the kings of Israel had introduced. The people of Israel secretly did things that were not right against the Lord their God. They built for themselves high places at all their towns, from watchtower to fortified city. They set up for themselves pillars and sacred poles on every high hill and under every green tree. There they made offerings on all the high places, as the nations whom the Lord carried away before them, whom they did wicked things, provoking the Lord to anger. They served idols, of which the Lord had said to them, You shall not do this. Yet the Lord warned Israel and Judah by every prophet and every seer, saying, Turn from your evil ways, keep my commandments and my statutes in accordance with all the law that I commanded your ancestors and that I sent to you by my servants, the prophets. They would not listen, but were stubborn, as their ancestors had been, who did not believe in the Lord their God. They despised his statutes and his covenant that he made with their ancestors and the warnings that he gave them. They went after false idols and became false. 
they followed the nations that were around them, concerning whom the Lord had commanded them that they should not do as they did. They rejected all the commandments of the Lord their God and made for themselves cast images of two calves. They made a sacred pole, worshipped all the host of heaven, and served Baal. They made their sons and their daughters pass through fire. They used divination and augury, and they sold themselves to do evil in the sight of the Lord, provoking him to anger. Therefore the Lord was very angry with Israel and moved them out of his sight. None was left but the tribe of Judah alone. The king of Assyria brought people from Babylon, Kutha, Ava, Hamath, and Sepharvaim, and placed them in the cities of Samaria in place of the people of Israel. They took possession of Samaria and settled in its cities. When they first settled there, they did not worship the Lord. Therefore the Lord sent lions among them, which killed some of them. So the king of Assyria was told, The nations that you have carried away and placed in the cities of Samaria do not know the law of the God of the land. Therefore he has sent lions among them. They are killing them, because they do not know the law of the God of the land. Then the king of Assyria commanded, Send there one of the priests whom you carried away from there. Let him go and live there, and teach them the law of the God of the land. So one of the priests whom they had carried away from Samaria came and lived in Bethel. He taught them how they should worship the Lord. But every nation still makes gods of its own and put them in the shrines of the high places that the people of Samaria had made, every nation in the cities in which they lived. The people of Babylon made Sakoth benoth The people of Kuth made Nergel. The people of Hamath made Ashima. The Avits made Nibaz and Tartak. The Sepharvites burned their children in the fire to Abimelech and Anemelech, the gods of Sepharvaim. They also worshipped the Lord and appointed from among themselves all sorts of people as priests of the high places who sacrificed for them in the shrines of the high places. So they worshipped the Lord, but also worshipped their own gods after the manner of the nations from among whom they had been carried away. To this day, they continue to practice their former customs. They do not worship the Lord. They do not follow the statutes or the ordinances or the law or the commandment that the Lord commanded the children of Jacob, whom he named Israel. The Lord had made a covenant with them and commanded them, You shall not worship other gods or bow yourselves to them or serve them or sacrifice to them, but you shall worship the Lord who brought you out of the land of Egypt with great power and with an outstretched arm. You shall bow yourselves to him, and to him you shall sacrifice. The statutes and the ordinances and the law and the commandment that he wrote for you, you shall always be careful to observe. You shall not worship other gods. You shall not forget the covenant that I made with you. You shall not worship other gods, but you shall worship the Lord your God. He will deliver you out of the hand of all your enemies. They would not listen, however, but they continued to practice their former custom. So these nations worship the Lord, but also serve their carved images. To this day, their children and their children's children continue to do as their ancestors did. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A couple of points speak to me in this passage. Trained as I am in anthropology, I am so intrigued by the connection of God to the land. The Assyrians were deeply worried by the affliction of the displaced people that they settled in the lands of Samaria, Israel. It seemed like the land was in rebellion against them. They discerned that it was because the foreigners had no connection to the God who resided in the land. This may seem strange and foreign to us, and it is an ancient idea that was also found among the Israelites themselves. There is in their mind a deep connection between their intimate connection with God and the land itself. This continues to our present time. For many in Israel, the land itself is sacred, and they have a sacred task to protect it. This makes dealings with the indigenous Palestinians complicated, to say the least. So we continue to pray for peace in Israel. 
and justice for all. Second point that jumps out to me is that the idolatry of the Israelites led them to feed their children to the fires, which is abhorrent, of course, human sacrifice. And the scriptures say it led the people to become false themselves. I think that's a key discernment point for our multicultural, multi-religious age. Is our spiritual practice leading people to become more truthful, more integrated, more full of integrity, or less so? May the Lord help us to walk in the light that we might be true, that we might be people of integrity. Amen. Turning now to our intercessions in this, the week preceding Thanksgiving, let us give thanks to God our Father always and for everything, saying, We thank you, Lord, for the beauty and wonder of creation, for the changing colors, the changing seasons. Lord, we thank you for all that is gracious in the lives of women and men, revealing the image of Christ working for the common good. Lord, we thank you for our daily food, for our homes, families, and friends. Lord, we thank you for minds to think, hearts to love. Lord, we thank you for health, strength, and skill to work, and for leisure to rest and play. Lord, we thank you for those who are brave and courageous, patient in suffering, faithful in adversity. Lord, we thank you for all who pursue peace, justice, and truth. Lord, we thank you. Almighty God, we thank you for making the fruitful earth produce what is needed for life. Bless those who work in the fields. Give us favorable weather and harvest, and grant that we may share the fruits of the earth rejoicing in your goodness. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Beloved, let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. Now, friends, the peace of God, which passes understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, and the blessing of the Creator, the Redeemer, and the sanctifying Spirit be upon you and yours this day and forevermore. Amen. Amen. Have a blessed day today, Monday, the second day of October.